Well, here we are at the Etihad Stadium. It's full time. City have beaten Aston Villa after coming from behind to win 3 2 in the final Premier League day of the season. It's given them enough points to win the title against Liverpool. It did all they could down at Anfield to win that match. Three goals to one against Wolves. City take the title by one point. But Brian, I suppose you've got to give credit to Liverpool as well. They looked dead and buried back in January, but they really did put on a brilliant fight in the second half of the season to give them a chance on the final day. Yes, they did. I mean, it's been a great a great season. Um, as you said, it looked like City had it won when they were 14 points ahead. Be it the Liverpool had two matches in hand, they still had a lot to do. They had. It's hard to stay with City because they're so relentless. They lose so few games. I think it's four over the season this season. Um, but Liverpool sustained their effort right to the last. We're quite good enough. In fairness to City, they did what they had to do today. It made hard work a bit, I suppose. They gave a lot of their fans nervous, nervous moments, 2 nothing down. But they just had that quality and that re relentlessness about their play and their attacking play. And, and they stick with their game plan. They stick with that uh, style of passing, quick passing. A lot of good dribbling today as well, getting to the end line, cutbacks and brilliant goals to win the game. And uh, they just had too much for Villa in the end. But overall, over the season, whoever gets the most points deserves to win the league. Whether you win it in goal difference, you win it by a point, or you win it by 20 points. City have won it today, they've won it by just a one, and they're deserving winners. Liverpool ran them close. The unfortunate thing is that no one else is close to them at the moment. Chelsea were. Some pe a lot of people's favourites to win the league this year, they didn't run them close. Manchester United were nowhere near them, Arsenal, Spurs, all the rest of them. So they're just so far ahead of the rest, these two teams. I think Chelsea could make up the ground next year, but for now we should celebrate the brilliance of this Manchester City team and the excellence of the Liverpool team that ran them so close. I'll just say one more thing on Liverpool as well, is that They've basically played every single possible game that it is possible to play in the league season. They play every single Premier League game and every single Cup game because they get to the three finals. It's so hard to do that in this day and age, and especially when you're trying to win the title from a team like Manchester City. Yeah, but they, both of both clubs manage their, their squads very, very well. Did I always look at City's team towards the end of the season? You'll see that novel, very few players play over 20 games in 28 game season. Look at the Aston Villa today, team today. About seven or eight of their starters have played uh, 24, 25 games this season. And Villa wouldn't have done too well in the Cups either. But Manchester City and, and Liverpool both use their squads well. They take some risks at times in, in rotating the squads. But they, Liverpool proved this year that they've got a squad to match Manchester City's. Manchester City's squad was found out a couple of times. You saw that last week when they were at West Ham and they drew. But the defence looked a bit weak. They looked weak on the right hand side. Defence Fernandino today in the first half didn't so that well. They don't trust Ake, a 40 million pound player. So, you know, maybe their squad isn't as deep as, as we've always thought. But, I'm, you know, they signed Haaland. I'm sure they'll sign more players this year. Liverpool have made some very, very good signings. They're also pulling players through the academy, the likes of Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott, brilliant during the week. And, um, you know, Manchester City have those players as well, but they've not brought as many through as Liverpool have. They've not played as many. I mean, we look at Foden, he's such an exceptional player, a brilliant player. But both of them we expect to strengthen again this year. But they've used their squads well, and oh, City have... Uh, they, 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 they've lasted the pace. They've just about got there in the end. But you look at the points total again. 93 points, is it? Yeah. It's, just, it's a magnificent it's point total. It's, 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 we're, we're out of real centre forwards. Yeah. Well, just on uh, the player situation as well with City, like outside of Kevin De Bruyne, it's hard to pick out like one key player maybe for them because they've all really contributed in different ways. Alexander Zinchenko came in late in the season. He's made a great contribution over the last number of weeks. Cancelo has been outstanding. Um, I'm looking at the back end, Rick Laporte. He overcame some problems last season to put in a really good season. Uh, John Stones, yeah, Ruben Diaz, Diaz made Diaz their contributions. Been a, Diaz has been an important player. I think the other one who's exceptionally important is Edison, Edison both for yeah. his distribution and his, and his saves. Didn't have too many to make saves to make today. He was beaten for two goals. 
for this distribution and starting play from the back. No matter what way team set up against them, he'd pick out players in advanced positions, near them is easier, but what, further up the pitch he can ping the ball into, into the front man. I think De Bruyne is a key, key man. I yeah. think he had, he had a brilliant, he's player of the year in the, in the league this year. The soccer writers, I think, went for Salah, two brilliant players. Who would you went for? Um, I think I, I, I think I might have went for Salah, but you know I don't have a vote in it. I think uh, Salah, for his consistency, the number of goals he scored, um, the fact that he's always fit, he plays every game. He's not one to get so tight, although he was left out today, funnily enough. But I admire De Bruyne so much because he's playing in that central area in the pitch. He, um, oh, they're two. Two brilliant he's, players. He's also the for, top scorer for City as well this yeah, season. Yeah, but I think he's the. Uh, you said you know is he, is he a key key man? I I think he is. Yeah. Uh, but the so like Phil Foden has been extraordinarily good this year, as well. Rodri has developed into a, a brilliant, player. brilliant player, brilliant holding player, and he scored five goals as well this season. He's taken over from that Fernandino role. We saw Fernandino on the pitch playing the back today. Wondered would. Rodri developed, didn't look mobile enough in the early stages when he got into the team initially when he came at Atletico, but now he looks a, a, a class act. So they, they have a great squad of players, they're not seeing the best of Grealish yet, now they've added Haaland. But uh, you know, before we talk about next year, I think we should just accept the joy of this year, the brilliant matches that we saw, and particularly between Manchester City and Liverpool, those two all draws, the two two all draws were brilliant games beautiful beautiful football as it should be played risk football courageous football not uh, leaving yourself leaving themselves open at the back to chase goals great stuff uh, technically yeah. brilliant teams with massive levels of fitness and uh, quality and individual skill it's been a great season from that point of view and the game's kind of you know let's say revolutionized but the two managers, Klopp and Guardiola, who have changed the game. Like we were looking at City there at one point, their formation was 2-3-4-1. It yeah. was just I mad. Look, the, the game has been revolutionised by the rules, I think, in terms of you know the goalkeeper. No pass backs, the goalkeeper yeah. you can't pick it up and kick it anymore. The offside rule in favour of attackers. VAR deciding on things on, on, on around, the, around the goal. But um, I, I think the managers... Are, are brilliant managers. They extract the maximum from their players, shapes and and, and so on. I think City, uh, their style of play is beautiful. And uh, at times it can be boring watching them against teams that are not able to survive against it because they retain possession so well. They work so hard. Their pressing game is incredible. Liverpool, the intensity they play with, the energy they play with, attacking full backs. Both teams have that. Uh, I think City's team is probably a smaller team. Yeah. Don't have huge players yet. They're very effective at set pieces. Liverpool stronger team. Van Dijk. They don't mind playing two at the back with Van Dijk and Matab or, or, or Van Dijk and Canate now. Two full backs in advanced positions. Uh, it's great football, you know. And they've set a standard for the others to try and match. Chelsea showed how to do it last year by winning the Champions League but they have a bit to do to get back to the level of these teams as regards the Premier League Guardiola this, this, you know everybody says he's a great manager he's done brilliant things in the game but he hasn't won the Champions League yet with Manchester City and again they had a disappointing exit will this put the shine on the season for him even though that's the big trophy that he wants at Man City will this oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. you look at the supporters today they're not saying oh we lost the Champions League we didn't win it this year but on the night they were beaten by Real Madrid they, they would have felt they would have felt it very deeply that they lost that game um, yeah well, I, I think for the owners and the money they pump into it they, um, from, from um, the Middle East yeah. they didn't do it they, 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 they they're, they're kind of a world club now. They've clubs dotted around the world where they're, they're they're in partnerships with. They want a bit of world domination. Manchester City. Part of world domination is you need to win the Champions League, which is the biggest and best competition in world football, and it's the hardest one to win. And Guardiola mentioned that when you get away with winning six round, six you know four, uh, the six group games. And a, and a few knockout games to win it. But it's not about that compared to the league. It's the quality of the opposition when you get to those knockout games. They haven't been quite able to get over the line. They were brilliant at times in the Champions League this year. They met a team who have just something extraordinary that, that were able to do them. And uh, 
you know, they, they buckled in those few minutes when they conceded the goals against Real Madrid. They were they buckled defensively. And can they learn from that and go on and do it next year? He said, well, we will try again. But this is a great day for them. This is, is. This yeah. is a great day for them for the style they've done it in the, over the whole season, right through the season, playing great football, scoring magnificent goals looking beautiful there's no cynicism in the way they play yeah the people might be out foul in the middle of the field when they have to but in general they dominate games 70 80 percent possession and all match and you, you you can only admire them and not talk about not winning the champions league today i think that's i think that's been dealt with and yeah. they go on and start again next season Stephen. we should get big praise well before we go fernandinho the man who came in from Shakhtar Donetsk. Not nine much transfer, ago, nine years ago, yeah. Not a lot of people knew much about him, but he's turned out to be a bit of a legend at the club. Well, he's been the consistent one, and the one kind of when all the fancy stuff was going on, you know, and the ticky-tacky and all that, he's been the one in the middle sorting fellas out for years and making sure there was a uh, protection for the centre-backs to let the full-backs off and let all those tacking players do their stuff. He's been a wonderful player for them, very, very good, very good passer. He, he, I can remember when he, he kind of started off in the team with Fernando and Fernandino, and there wasn't much between them. One of them was slightly taller, right? But I used to spend a bit of time walking them out. Eventually, Fernando went off. Fernandino was still here and has played his part. Didn't play so often this year. I think he played about eight or nine league games, and he's decided he wants to go back. But he's also not ruled out coming back here in some role. He must have some special qualities that they decided that he was to be the captain this year. So it's a great finish for him. Not a great finish the way he played today, but a great finish for him to be part of it on the day they've won the league. So here we hear them singing in the background, <laughs> we're the champions, and they're doing it all. And they'll be singing for a long time tonight and celebrating. Yeah, too. it's a great day for the boy. And just to finish, look, next year, next season they win with Erling Haaland, as we mentioned already, probably arguably the best number nine in the world. Kylian Mbappe, maybe a slightly different style of player, but it's hard not to see them getting the three in a row. But then again, City will have a lot of players going to the World Cup in December. Liverpool don't have as many going down to Qatar for that World Cup. Are we looking at another two horse race between those two clubs? Well, as I said, a lot of people thought Chelsea would be in the running this, this, this year after what Tuchel came, did when he came in after Lampard last year to win the Champions League. And uh, they weren't able to do it. You know, they, had, they were in the turmoil eventually. It's only 10 weeks ago. I think since Abramovich was uh, put on the very bold boy step, but still they weren't. They hadn't done that well up until then. The Lukaku one didn't work out that well for them. But you would expect, you know, it, it might be more difficult for Chelsea next year. You see Arsenal or Spurs stepping up to that level, probably not. Manchester United, it's hard to see Ten Hag having that impact so quick. So I think it'll be probably those two again. But look, who knows next year? The picture might be different in August when it all gets going again. Everyone has <laughs> sorted out their squads and whatever happens, happens. But the addition of Haaland gives them another exceptional player and still quite a young team. It's not like an ageing aging team at the moment at all. So I have to expect that City will probably be favourites for next season once again. Uh, Brian, I think we better go and try and catch our flight that's going to be taken off not too long before this stadium starts to take off because the Premier League trophy is on its way out. It's been a brilliant season as ever with Premier League coverage on Off The Ball, thanks to Sky Sports. Stephen Doyle here with Brian Kerr signing off for the end of the season. It's finished Manchester City 3, Aston Villa 2, City are the champions once again. Do join us next season, we'll be back for more full live exclusive commentaries on Off The Ball and News Talk.